Hey, 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 and what's going on, everyone? I'm so glad that you have took your time to spend with me right here today on the MRB Wrestling Review Show. I am your co-host, Mike McRock Wilson, and tonight we just saw TNA Impact Wrestling, brother. Well, except Hulk Hogan wasn't on there. Um, so, you know, I guess I was okay, I guess. You know, you can't have Hulk, Ho Hulk Hogan on TNA Impact Wrestling every week because he's a guy that should be on, you know, when the time is right and, and on special occasions as well. So, with that being said, it was an alright episode. But for this review, I'm going to give you my win and my fail. And with that being said, my win out of this episode was that the Battle for Glory series is is really uh, has been you know consistent throughout, and what I really like is you know they're really bringing prestige to this Battle for Glory series with matches such as Samoa Joe versus Jeff Hardy where Jeff Hardy won. Um, you had Mr. Anderson versus Magnus in which Anderson won via disqualification because Bobby Roode came out and attacked Mr. Anderson with a steel chair and cost Magnus 10 points. So Magnus is now 10 points less. And I like what Bobby Roode has been doing on TNA Impact Wrestling as well because, you know, he's a guy that wants to be the winner and now he's got two guys with him. Now the new formation of Bobby Roode, Daniels, and Kaz. But what's also interesting is that right now it feels like uh, Christopher Daniels is going to take a step back as a leader. Now he's going to be a follower to Bobby Roode, or so is Kazarian. So it's kind of so it's going to be interesting now to see if Christopher Daniels can play that role as a follower instead of a leader, and uh, be the guy that probably commands and follows Bobby Roode's you know leadership skills. And also last night was um, uh, Daniels and Frankie Kazarian going one-on-one. -on -one. What I like about that is that um, they put aside their their um, uh, uh, desire to win the Battle for Glory series. Uh, and their friendship was more important. I like that because... Everything happens for a reason. If if that didn't happen, this new formation of Bobby Roode and Cass and Daniels wouldn't have happened. So I like that that happened, and also that um, uh, that they're bringing prestige to uh, groups. You know, you got the Aces and Nates, you got the Main Event Mafia, and now you got this new group, which there's no name yet. So it's going to be interesting, you know, to tune in next week. You know, it leaves you wanting for more. It it, it leaves you to see, okay. What's this new group going to be called? Is it going to be Threechin? You know, and there's something weird like that. Hey, who knows yet? Uh, but my fail on TNA Impact Wrestling was Tito Ortiz. The segment with that involving Kurt Angle and Bully Ray. Kurt Angle came out and said, I respect your space and I hope you respect mine and stay out of my way. And so I won't have a problem with you. And then Bully Ray comes out and says the complete opposite. You know, I don't like you. Stay out of my way. Blah, 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 etc., etc. And without Tito Ortiz revealing why he was there in the first place. I guess it's, you know, probably to build more build against this thing or him and Rampage Jackson. I understand that there's a connection with, with Bellator and, and TNA Impact Wrestling. But please leave the Bellator stuff off of TNA. I don't like that Rampage is there. And sure as hell don't like Tito Ortiz is there either. And that whole segment with Tito Ortiz not only fell flat, it just didn't do anything for the company. Uh, uh, but uh, And uh, with that being said... This whole thing where Tito T's backstage and he said that um, Hardcore Justice is going to be on my hands. Uh, uh, don't matter if he delivers or not. It's still not going to be good because the fans even hardly reacted when he came out um, during that segment. Uh, is is about as equal as what happened when he made his return on last week's show. 
So, whatever Tito Ortiz is going to do on Hardcore Justice next week is just going to fall flat anyway because there's absolutely no fan reaction. And I hope that Dixie Carter hears the fan reaction when Tito Ortiz comes out and he cuts a promo, which he sucks at, by the way. And really listen to the TNA fans and, you know, ask yourself, is it worth it to have Tito Ortiz on the show? Absolutely not. I can go on about uh, all the reasons why Tito Ortiz should not be TNA Impact Wrestling, but I'll just leave it at that. Also, what I, what I also liked about uh, this show, you know, I guess, you know, we go, we go to a positive, hit the negative, back to a positive again. The build-up to the World Heavyweight Championship match is actually not half bad. You know, uh, we saw uh, Chris Saban confronting Bully Ray when the show kicked off. And uh, Bully wanted Hulk Hogan to come out with a contract. Instead, he gets Brooke Hogan. And um, what I like about this contract signing is that there is no table in the ring. So, you know, cliches out the window. So, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, with that being said, that there's going to be a stipulation. If Bully Ray doesn't win the World Heavyweight Championship, he will no longer... Um, uh, receive any more title shots if he loses. Now here's the thing that I don't like about that is that they already done that with Sting and when he lost he never got any world championship matches after. Uh, even though it's a taste of his own medicine kind of thing, that out of mind, it's just the only thing that I really didn't like that came out of it was that they're trying to recycle a storyline and I think what's going to end up happening is that Bully Ray is going to retain his title and then this war with Aces and Eights, the 5-on-5 five five match next week, I think what's going to happen is that, uh, you know, someone from the main event mafia, which I'll get to later on, is going to go off, uh, is going to be written off TNA. Also last night, it was a six-person uh, uh, mixed tag team match. The Bromans, you know them, uh, uh, Jesse and Robbie E, and Mickey James, the knockout champ, Versus ODB, Storm, and Gunner. And uh, where um, ODB, Storm, and Gunner got the victory. And the only thing that I don't like is that the tag team division is pretty much almost extinct. And, and, and the loss from the Bromans really don't help them being number one contenders. And that's the only team that looks legit to face tag team champs for a tag team title match. It's just that, you know, losing uh, match after match against the champs really don't put them in a title situation when they're the only other team besides Storm and Gunner. But with that being said, with the uh, Knuckles Championship title pitcher upcoming, probably Bad for Glory or maybe before, you know... You got this thing with ODB and Gail Kim because after the match, Gail Kim came out and attacked ODB, and then from behind, Mickey James attacked ODB. So there's going to be some sort of other handicap or triple threat match for the Knockout Championship. Uh, that uh, actually I don't mind because um, you know this is the match that M Mickey James could probably gain the benefit from, but I really don't see how. Uh, she would because you have ODB and, and Gail Kim and Gail Kim out of the three is probably you know the most underrated type of knockout in the knockout division and in any woman's division on any wrestling company so I think you know with all that being said I think Gail Kim will be the one that will probably be the next Knockouts Champion. I think she is the one that does deserve the Knockouts Champion right now because Gail Kim has been great throughout the last few weeks and months. You know, with matches with Taryn Terrell and, uh, o and now uh, uh, coming in with ODB, you know, and, and uh, Velvet Sky as well. And uh, who knows what's going to happen with Velvet Sky in the overall, you know, Contendership with the Knockouts Championship. And uh, next week we're, we're going to see um, Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, Kaz, and AJ Styles 
in a uh, ladder match next week at Hardcore Justice, the winner gets 20 points in the Bath Glory series. And the main event last night was Bully Ray and Devon versus Chris Saban and Sting. What I like about that match is that, you know, you can feel that reunion of Team 3D, even though they're technically aces and eights. When they were, when the audience was watching that and the viewers at home probably were thinking, yeah, this was 3T, Team 3D at its finest. And so, you know, with that being said, you know, it actually looked good, you know, for the two of them. Just to see them without the other Aces and Nates members really telling the audience, this is who we were before. And uh, with that being said, um, it was actually going to be Chris Sabin and Sting, but from behind it was Kurt Angle. So it was Kurt Angle in the match instead of Sting. So, you know, it was kind of like one-upping the Aces and Nates. But the funny thing is... Sometimes you don't expect, you know, the good guys to do the heel thing because, you know, it's 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 the heels that do the heel thing. So I, I like that it's not cliched and it's kind of like taste of the Aces and Nates own medicine. So, you know, with that being said, um, you know, it, it was like, haha, fooled ya. It was Kurt Angle all on. And at the end, it was Chris Saban and Kurt Angle getting the victory. Now, here's what I think is going to happen next week. Usually, okay, when, you know, something like this happens, odds are the opposite is going to happen at Hardcore Justice next week, free on TNA Impact Wrestling. I got a feeling that it will be Kurt Angle that gets pinned and goes off. Because, you know, we heard, you know, this thing that with Kurt Angle getting arrested for DOI, and I think, you know, he should go on rehab. And this is probably the write-off for Kurt Angle to get, you know, be the one that gets pinned in that match. And with the World Heavyweight Championship match, I got a feeling that Alex Shelley is going to come out and cost Chris Saban the match. I don't know. For some weird reason, they could go that route. You know, they could go the unexpected route. And I think that's what should happen, you know, just to, you know, shake things up because, you know, there is history with them, them two as the Morty City Machine Guns. So with that being said, I wouldn't mind seeing that the Morty City Machine Guns are working together in a one-on-one, -on -one comp, you know, comp, competition upcoming for Battle for Glory so that Bully Ray can defend his title, hopefully, against the winner of the Battle for Glory series, AJ Styles. I think this is what should happen on TNA. I don't know if that's the direction they'll go, but I'm hoping that does happen. And that was my review of TNA Impact Wrestling. I'm your co-host for the MRB Wrestling Review Show, Mike McRock Wilson. And to all you viewers watching, get plenty of rest, and always do your best.